The Takeover is one of the few recent indie games looking to put a spotlight back on beat-em-ups. Initially released on PC back in November of 2019, it came and went with very little fanfare. However, now that it's releasing on Switch, it has more eyes on it than ever. Sadly, after spending some time with the game, it isn't hard to imagine why no one seemed to care about it on PC. Just about everything about it feels mediocre or out of place. It isn't bad by any means, but in an era with so many games releasing every month, being merely passable isn't always good enough. The Takeover takes place in Steelhaven, a city engulfed with crime. Recently, all criminal activity has united under one banner, threatening to take over the city entirely. When police officer Ethan Rivers and his girlfriend Megan's daughter is kidnapped, they begin a journey to rescue her and prevent Steelhaven's takeover along with their friend Connor. Everything about this premise is generic. No, I don't think anyone has ever played a beat-em-up for its riveting plot, but they generally need to have something to make them stand out from the crowd. The takeover does not, especially not in its plot. It's impossible to talk about the takeover's story without touching on its different art styles. Aside from the intro, each of the story cutscenes are drawn in heavily stylized cartoony illustrations. While the art in these cutscenes looks good on its own, it stands in stark contrast to the in-game character models. When you're actually playing, the characters are much more realistic, reminiscent of a game you might see in an arcade in the mid-2000s. Neither of the two art styles look terrible, but the constant jump between them was jarring. Each voice performance in the game feels as if the actors recorded their lines once, went, well, that's good enough, I guess, and called it a day. I'm not going to act like these are the worst performances I've ever heard, but they certainly went along with the game's mediocre theme. As I mentioned earlier, no one really plays a beat-em-up for its plot. They play it for fun, mindless gameplay. This is where the takeover excels. Actually playing the takeover almost always felt satisfying, if not slightly unpolished. Making your way through each of the seven stages can be a fun time, especially when playing with a friend. The takeover features a few different gameplay modes, most notably arcade, challenge, and survival. Arcade is the classic beat-em-up story mode experience. Seven stages, each separate into smaller sections with a boss at the end. Aside from the story itself, my only other real complaint about the arcade mode is how easy it is. Players slowly build up a rage meter during levels that grants invincibility and high damage when activated. This meter can be saved until the end of each level and used to swiftly defeat every single boss, leading to many anticlimactic encounters. This ability, along with certain combos and melee weapons, feel like they should have been balanced just a bit more before the game's release. Challenge mode takes levels from arcade and adds new objectives to them, such as don't let your health drop below 50% or don't use super attacks. Survival mode is really only for those that seek a high score. All this mode does is throw players into a level with no extra health pickups and sends an infinite number of enemies at them until they die. The takeover also features two vehicle missions that are only playable with one player. These were a fun distraction from the normal gameplay loop, and it would have been nice to see them expanded upon or made playable with a second person. It is hard to talk about the takeover without addressing the recently released elephant in the room, Streets of Rage 4. Streets of Rage 4 does everything the takeover does leaps and bounds better. The one thing that the takeover does have unabashedly going for it is its soundtrack. Almost every single track in the game is an absolute banger. I found myself humming the first stage's music for hours after walking away from the game. The Takeover has next to nothing special about it. Aside from its stellar soundtrack, everything else about the game screams mediocre. Its gameplay, its art style, its modes, nothing about it stands out. While it isn't necessarily bad, it has the makings of a game that will be completely forgotten about in just a few days. Unless you are simply dying to play another beat-em-up on the Switch, the takeover probably isn't worth your time. Noisy Pixel is giving the takeover a 6 out of 10. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to read the full review at noisypixel.net. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.